Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, <laughs> whatever time you all are watching this show and from wherever you are. And Roger, I'm so happy you're here. This show would be so boring without you. <laughs> Likewise, sis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, we'd be just staring at a screen and talking to nobody. <laughs> that Yeah, right. And I had that happen one time when, because uh, I'm actually teaching on Leah uh, in Pakistan right now. And uh, the first time when I was doing this, uh, my inexperience of trying to do a PowerPoint that with slides, uh, they could see that, they could see me, but I couldn't see them. Kind of <laughs> reminds me of TV. I can't see you all who are watching us, but by faith, I believe they're out there watching us, Roger. Yeah, somebody is. Some, if this show is in, if this is one of those shows that airs at two o'clock in the morning or, or three o'clock in the morning, there's somebody that has <laughs> insomnia. <laughs> That's well, it's actually. Surfing the channels time. and came across us. It's about that time in the afternoon. It's around three in the afternoon on Sunday. So, uh, yeah, so that's the way it is. Uh, so, I do know that people every now and then that there are people out there because well, Rex and I will be in the street and, and they'll say, you're familiar. Where <laughs> have I seen you before? And then all of a sudden, oh, you're on TV, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. That's... Or like the uh, my receptionist at the chiropractor's office. She says, Elaine, will you send me your show? That's this week. So I'm sending her our show that we did earlier. So people do see it. All right. Okay. So what are we talking about today? Okay. Well, I before we start, I gotta, I've got to ask okay. you about your picture. What, What is that in the background, your background? Oh, I figured you were going to ask that. Does it look familiar to you? Uh, is that Lake Lure? Yes. How about that? Yeah. Man, that, that was before all the disaster. Exactly. Does it look like that now, does it? No, no, it doesn't. Wow. So, yeah. Maybe fact. Maybe maybe as a matter of fact, we should just really pray for the people of Lake Lore. Why don't right we now. do that right now? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just that area. There's places I understand Boone has been really hit really really hard too, Roger. Besides Asheville, Swannanoa is horrible. I mean, it's just horrible. Uh, Black Mountain, that whole area, you know where uh, Billy Graham. His family grew up. It's really, really bad. And they still need help. And the news media is not announcing it anymore. And people so quickly forget when it's not in front of their faces. Right. Yeah. Well, what's even worse is the mainstream media is, is now downplaying it and saying, you know, oh, there's people are fine. People are getting taken care of. You know, that's. It's 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 not it's, everything. It's not everything that's been told is they're, no, they're trying, and it's not trying. true because no. the the people that are in power, and I'm not saying it's Biden because I don't know who's behind everything, but those who are in power who are evil, um when you hear the stories coming out of the mountains of these areas of what people are saying. And, and I have a daughter that lives in that area. And, uh, and some of these stories I know are factual. So, but NBC, ABC, CNN, they're not telling those stories, Roger. They're not telling those stories about FEMA's not helping them. And right. Yeah. You can get $750 to help immediately right now. Oh, that's what you have to go on a computer. Okay. Yeah. And mainstream, mainstream media. And was, they don't even have electricity in these back places. I know. And the mainstream media is calling them all fake stories. I know. And it's not true. No. And, and one of the things, and I know we're not political, but God does call us to 
hold a standard. Yes, and it does. and when uh, I'm going to say her name, which I don't like doing, but Cam Camilla, when she says, "I want to help the working class," my response is, "The working class is in the mountains in all these areas." Why aren't you helping them? If you're not helping them now, what will you do if you become president to us? My husband's a working man. Those are my thoughts that go through my mind. And uh, it alarms me. It really does, Roger. Yeah, it does. You know, the Bible says that God hates injustice. He does. You know, and an un... Um, I, I, I can, maybe you can quote it in Proverbs. It talks about the unjust scales. Right. That's you know, what it and, is. And that is exactly what it is. That's what we're, that's what we're talking about here. So let's pray. Father, we, uh, Lord, we lift all these people to you, Lord, that have been impacted by the storm. Lord, there's so many Lord people that are people that are without homes, um, People without warmth right now, without heat. Mm. Uh, we had a freeze last night, a first freeze of the season. And uh, Father, these people need help. So, Lord, we thank you for so many of the local volunteers that have given of themselves Tyler, Tyler, Tyler Lisley. I can't even <laughs> really say the word. <laughs> sacrificially how's that yes. they gave it they've given of themselves lord are we uh lord we ask a blessing upon each of them lord that you would Amen. reward them yes, for their lord. efforts lord because you are opposed to injustice lord you because of injustice you sent your son into the world to die for the world so lord we just Lift these to you, Lord, and we ask that you would send more, more workers into the harvest, yes, more workers, Lord, to help these people. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen. And, and Father, I just want to, continuing on, Roger, and what you're doing, I just want to bless all the churches who are coming to help, Father, because yes. right now you are using the Christians the churches to bless the people and help them. Mm -hmm. And Father, that's what you've called the church to do. And Father, it really excites me to see your church in action mm -hmm. in doing these type of things. Thank you, Lord, for working through people. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah Amen. it really is. I mean, I don't know if you know this or not. I think you do. But Larry, my uh, whatever he is, my wife's daughter, <laughs> husband, I get the right words out here. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, he carried up lots and lots of waters into an area of Asheville. And he was told there by the people that he knows, and I know them too, Jay and Therese, that they would not have water for three to four weeks. And that was two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it was last week when he went up there. Um, so it's, I'm sharing that because it is extremely serious. And that's Asheville, everybody. Yeah. 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 They do have electricity now. They just had got that turned on. But water is critical. You need it for drinking. They said there's plenty of water bottles, but how do you flush your toilets without water? Hmm. Yeah. I don't even <laughs> want to think about that. I don't either. I <laughs> yeah. don't either. It's right. a horrible situation. There Shout is. And, all that and there's of. still areas that are still without power. I know that. So, yeah. I know that. What about Florida? Are, have you heard it, have all the power on? I mean, I heard a few days ago there were still areas in Florida from that hurricane where there's still no power to. Yeah, I don't know if to if now. Uh, I was wondering whether. Yeah, I I don't know. Um, but Florida is really good at, at emergency response. Yes, they are. They, they are. They've, they've had decades, decades, and decades and decades of practice. Yeah. Well, you know, DeSantis yeah. has actually sent people from Florida 
to go up to the mountains to help. Isn't that yes. awesome? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's so great that it, other he's states very are good. helping. If, he is. If you, if you want an example of a great governor, just look, yes. at, Ron, look at Ron DeSantis. Yeah, and Perfect. all of our all of our governors should be that way. Should be like that, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Right. For the people. Yes. Really, truly for the people. Mm -hmm. And that's the way our constitution was built on, is that we the people mm -hmm. to form a more perfect union. Mm -hmm. Everyone in Washington is supposed to be representing us, our desires. That's why we have elections, so we can vote out the ones who are not doing what we the people want. And uh, yes, yeah. so such an important thing. Okay, right. how do you so, jump in in yeah, 11 let's, minutes to yeah, what we okay. nobody talk about? Let me go ahead and we're going to actually go back to um, what we talked about a couple of weeks back. Did I, I think I got it right. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, if you remember, we had talked about Matthew 18, 18, and um, the the binding and loosing that God has given to the church. And, um, and we use the example uh, where Paul addressed the Corinthian church, and he had a man that was sleeping with his father's wife, and and Paul said, when you get together, um, you know, you, you come together in agreement. I'm looking here at the scripture, um, and it's right there in the middle. First Corinthians 5, do you see that? Mm -hmm. It says, when you gather in the name of the Lord Jesus, I am present with you in spirit, and the infinite power of the Lord Jesus is present also. So, and then he goes on to say, and I direct you to release this man over to Satan. This whole theme of, of binding and loosing um, really started back in Matthew 16. And I, I wanted to go back there. We kind of skipped over that. We didn't really cover it. Uh, but there's in Matthew 16, verse 19, Jesus is talking to Peter. And it was this, it was at the moment when Jesus asked the disciples who he was and uh, who do man who does you know who does who does man say that I am who do the people say that I am and um you know they said well some said you are Elijah the prophet you mm -hmm. know and it came up with different answers yeah. but it was Until Peter Peter yes it was Peter that came out and he says you are the Christ you are the son of the living God. And and uh, Jesus is like, wow, every once in a while, the light bulbs go on for Peter, you know? And Jesus yeah, says- Yeah, right. Once in a while, they do. Yeah. But and it's Jesus not consistent says, yet in his life. Jesus, yeah, it's like, that is a revelation that you got, you know, straight from God. Mm -hmm. you know, only, only God could have revealed that to you, Peter. And so he goes on and he changes Peter's name to- um, to mean stone. He says, Peter, you are a stone. He didn't change his name, but he he uh, he he gave the definition, you know. Right. But he he says, and then he and then he goes on to talk about it. He says, Well, matter of fact, let's just read it. Okay. Matthew 16, 19. And I we're gonna do it in the Passion Translation. Yeah, I love that Passion Bible. Yeah. So Jesus says, he says, I give, talking to Peter, he says, I give you the name Peter, a stone. Wait a minute. I need to blow that up, don't I? I can read it. Well, let me but see. Can you blow can... it up? Yeah, I can. There, we'll do there that. Go. Put that right in the middle. Okay. Um, so there, we'll put it in the middle like that. All right, so Jesus is speaking, and he says, I give you the name Peter, which means stone. And then he shifts gears, and he says, and this rock will be the bedrock foundation on which I will build my church, a legislative assembly, 
and the power of death will not be able to overpower it. Verse 19, and I will give you the keys of heaven's kingdom realm to forbid on earth that which is forbidden in heaven and to release on earth that which is released in heaven. Roger, you know what's just hitting me about that verse? What? I love that word. It says, my legislative assembly. Yeah. That is government. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, I, I have to say this because we are taught in so many churches, we're not supposed to be political. We're not supposed to be in the government or have anything to do with the government. But God has placed us in that area, and it's a higher government than what's happening in Washington, D.C. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and that word here, the power of death, will not be able to overpower it. That gives should give all of us tremendous hope that the unjust scales that we talked about a few minutes ago will not prevail. Yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's so true. We, we had talked about that when we talked about Matthew 18, 18. And that was the, when Jesus, you know, said, when you cut, when you come together in my name, when two or three of you are gathered together in my name. And, and so we mentioned that that was a, um, a governmental authority yes that that is has been passed down to the church and so we see the and then we saw that in practice and action with Paul dealing with the Corinthian church but here in Matthew 16 Jesus is telling ahead of time that it's the church that's going to have this kind of power power Exactly. This kind of authority that is the church. It's a governmental thing. It's a legis, as the passion says, a legislative thing. And, and okay. Yeah. And, and to me, that means if we have that legislative responsibility, mm -hmm. I'm picking my words there, then that means that legislative action that we all possess of using binding and releasing in the heavenly realms but also in the realms around our life in the political realms that's going on in our nations when we see evil and uh, just like sometimes in, in the spiritual realm we have to actually take physical action you see that in the bible you see where you know uh, I forgot who it was. I think it was Jonathan or someone. And he was shooting the arrows. It wasn't Jonathan. I don't remember who it was. But the prophet said to him, it was a king, why are did you stop now? If you had you know, shot like two more arrows, your enemy would be defeated. So, you know, I remember when we went out and we prayed over the uh, five, four corners of the city of Davy. And then we saw God. Right move in the city of Davy to bring such redemption that it was amazing to me. So we as Christians are supposed to be involved on all levels of this legislative action. Yeah. Yeah, that's, and you know, the church is, we are God's ambassadors in the church, but I mean, in the, in the world, but the church is the governmental authority God's governmental right. authority in the in the earth, and yes. uh, and so God has granted to the church uh, sp some specific powers, you know. And we talked about individually. We in the past we talked about how our authority, our power, is limited to our level of submission to the Lord. Exactly. But here it's talking about, and, and in a sense, as we look back in Matthew 19, uh, Matthew 18, in a sense, we see that the same thing is true. It's true on an individual's basis. It's true on a corporate level and a church level in the sense that before the church makes any legislative decrees, any legislative 
declarations, any legislative laws, that they must first hear from the Lord. That's right. Without that hearing, the, it's just words. It is. It's just. It's just words, and it ha and it does not carry the power of no. law. If it no. didn't come from the Lord Jesus Himself, it doesn't really carry the power of law. No, and, there's. And a so we see that an example of that, and I'll, I'll let you speak in a minute. Okay. But a, a classic example of that, and it really ties just directly back into this Matthew sixteen, and that is the. And I don't mean to be uh, down, putting down the Catholic Church, but but you see what happens because there's this idea of infallibility of the Pope, and the and the Pope can make these legislative decisions. And what the you know, and when the Pope speak, it becomes law. You know, well that in a sense that is supposed to be the authority of the Church. That is supposed to be the way the church is supposed to work, but uh, but we see that the Pope is not infallible, you know, Far from and it. and one man does not is not the same as a group coming together to find the mind of the Lord first. Correct, and that takes you back, Roger, to Ephesians four that God placed in the body apostles, prophets, teachers, mm -hmm. evangelists and pastors, there is your legislative directive where they are supposed to come together and hear and then communicate that to the body so that we know what we are doing. <clears throat> yes. You know, yeah. that we are in agreement with the spirit like that. But we see very little of that taking place in our world. Right, right. So the thing, the other thing that, that, tied in going back to the Matthew 18 18 it started out with dealing with offenses of you know being of, offending the little ones and then if you're offended one or one you go to one another and and then it goes to this point where you eventually if if you can't resolve it it winds up at the church which has this legislative power and we know that Paul even uh, spoke to the Corinthians and said to them, why are you suing each other in, in secular court? Don't you know that you're going to judge angels? And so that kind of power has been, has been given to the church and, and it all, it all ties back to this. So I know we're just about out of time here. So okay. we're going to look at John 20, 21 here real quick. And he's, Jesus says, I give you the gift of peace in the same way the Father sent me, I am now sending you. Now he drew close enough to each of them that they could feel his breath, and he breathed on them, and he said, Welcome the Holy Spirit of the living God. You now have the mantle of God's forgiveness. As you go, you are able to share the life-giving power to forgive sins or to withhold forgiveness. Now, again, we see there we're looking at that power to bind or the power to release. And then in Mark 3, Jesus said, if you want to break into the house of a strong man, you have to and, and plunder it. You have to what? You got to bind that strong man first. And of course, he's referring to demonic entities, you know, in people. And so this whole concept of binding and releasing to sum it all up is to say that God has given us individual power to bind and, le and, and release, when it, particularly when it comes to individual lives, people with demonic possession, oppression. God has given us the ability to speak to those things and command them out. And we, we talked about that briefly in the past. But we see on a much larger scale that there's this legislative authority, this legislative power that has been granted to the church to bind and to, lead, and, and to loose. This is very similar, Roger. Um, don't really have time to go into this, but the blessing that God's uh, also said for us to give, that blessing, uh, you know, that ability to forgive sin, uh, Rex and I ministered in a conference, and we were actually told, "You, 
assume that responsibility to forgive sin in the name of Jesus. Because some people need to literally hear, your sins are forgiven. I forgive you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, and, and that's so important because that's part of that blessing that we can give to people that they are released from that bondage of that darkness of sin, uh, that God has now freed them from the bondage of the evil one. That's so important. Well, you know, part of the cool thing about releasing is when she was when Jesus it said to the guy, your sins, your sins are forgiven. Now pick up your bed and walk. Yeah, it was, right. The guy was a cripple. I mean, you know, yeah. he had to be carried. He had to be carried in there. And of course, that blew the mind of the Pharisees and the Sadducees that were around him. It's like only God can forgive sin. And Jesus says, "Well, just so you know, no, exactly." <laughs> Which is easier to say? What's Make easier up your to bed say? Or, or, yeah, or your sins right. are forgiven. All right. And so, uh, but that's how important it is. You know, it's it important it for is. us to be able no. to do that to set people free. Not only that, you're going to see healings occur. Oh you yes. Know? You set oh, yeah. them free from bondage to sin, and it releases healing into their lives. It does. It does. Well, we could go on talking about the subject a whole lot more. Yeah. But sad <laughs> to say, we are out of time. We are. And maybe this is something we should continue. Who knows? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're just going to bless you guys and say, be blessed in the name of Jesus. Pick up the mantle, forgive sin, ask the Lord for your own forgiveness too. Don't forget that when you sin. Yes. Uh, but forgive others, verbalize it. When God tells you to verbalize it, release people to move in the spirit of God in the name of Jesus. And remember, God is extremely, you know what Passionate. I'm going to say? Yes. <laughs> about you. you. <laughs>